This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, the newest addition to a rescue helicopter fleet is already proving its worth and expanding the scope of operations. Southland's economy is in line for a boost thanks to a new research facility that's being driven by a substantial partnership. And Dunedin's future is up for discussion as the DCC continues public hearings on the next district plan. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Dupree. More lives are likely to be saved as a result of new technology being used in Otago's rescue helicopter operations. It means pilots can fly in poor visibility, which previously limited rescues, and the investment is already paying off. The Otago Rescue Helicopter Trust has recently upgraded its fleet of air ambulances. With the addition of a top-of-the-line Kawasaki BK-117 helicopter, the set has grown to four. Chief Pilot Graham Gale says the upgrade will revolutionise their performance. Look, this is a game changer for what we do. Um, what it actually enables us to do, it enables us to fly single pilot IFR, um, but at lower levels, and um, at lower levels in areas that you wouldn't be able to fly IFR. IFR stands for Instrument Flight Rules, where pilots fly by reference to instruments in the flight deck. The upgrade is the biggest of its kind in New Zealand's history. Gale says the new technology comes at a substantial cost, but he's measuring its value in lives saved. I think when you ask the cost, I think it's, it's you know, I, I would rather answer that and say it's what the capabilities are. You know, will it make a difference, you know, in our region, will it make a difference um, out there? And yes, it will. Gale says the helicopter is able to fly lower in weather conditions with reduced visibility. That means previously hard to reach rural areas can be better covered by the service. And staff have already flown some successful rescue missions using the new capabilities. We went into Wanaka the other, the other night twice and, and those jobs, you know, and that patient wouldn't have had that extra care if we didn't have this technology. Formed in 1994, the Otago Rescue Helicopter Trust has grown to deliver service over more than 65,000 square kilometres. The team are hoping this upgrade will make their efforts even more effective. Jack Conroy, The South Today. Cuts to the Humanities Division at the University of Otago may see the closure of the only Indonesian music master's level course in New Zealand. A confidential source has told the South today that one of the courses to be cut from Otago's music department is gamelan. The Indonesian form of tuned percussion is taught in Dunedin up to a master's level and that's not offered anywhere else outside Indonesia. The South today is waiting on a response from the university. In August, the institution said up to 20 jobs may be on the line in the humanities division after student numbers dropped by more than a thousand in six years. A multi-million dollar dairying research facility and farm is being established in Southland. It's a partnership involving Ag Research, Dairy NZ and the Southern Dairy Development Trust representing local farmers. And it's said to have wide-ranging benefits for the industry as well as Southland's economy. Farming for the future, a new multi-million dollar dairy research facility and farms being developed just north of Invercargill. The Southern Dairy Hub is being established on 350 hectares of sheep and beef farm at Makarewa. The land will be converted to dairy this season for Fonterra and will be at the forefront of the latest industry research and technology. I've noticed quite a change in farmers in the last few years. They really want to lift their environmental gain. They're looking to seek new systems and so on. The new facility aims to enable farmers and scientists to address specific dairying needs in the region. The wider New Zealand agricultural industry is also expected to benefit from the work. Ag Research and Dairy NZ each put $5 million towards it, with southern farmers raising just over a million. Environment Southland says it'll be the first of its kind in the region. I think it's great that we can have science happening in Southland. We have got quite a different region and uh, dairy is a significant agricultural activity. Environment Southland has also been a part of the consultation process for this project and staff are looking forward to seeing results. 
Tim says the environmental impacts of dairy farming can be massive, so it's important to have regulations in place to monitor and minimise damage to land and water. We had discussions with them and we made sure that we put um, some conditions in place because they will be converting a farm to dairy to ensure that they're able to carry out the type of research that they do need to do, um, which is, would be different types of activities that you may see on a normal dairy farm. Initially, 640 cows will be milked on site, expanding to around 800. The government says it'll mean southern farmers will have access to the latest science and innovation. Ruby Spink, The South Today. Health services in central Dunedin are having to make way for a supermarket car park extension. Centre City New World is going to be upgraded and its car park extended across a neighbouring Hanover Street site. The Dunedin Urgent Doctors and Accidents Centre will be moving further away from Dunedin Hospital as a result. Also being forced to relocate is Southern Community Laboratories and the Urgent Pharmacy. Supermarket company Foodstuffs owns the building leased by the health services and plans to demolish it next year. That'll make way for extra car parking, with the overhaul expected to be finished in the last quarter of 2017. Public hearings for the Dunedin City Council's second generation plan, known as 2GP, are continuing. Submitters, including the University of Otago, are scheduled to make their opinions known over the coming week. The plan has been three years in the making and will replace the existing district plan when ratified. The Dunedin City Council is getting a chance to respond to submitters and to present its own evidence as public hearings for the 2GP continue. Staff are listening to submissions on various topics while commissioners consider whether to make any changes to the proposed plan. But also you know, through the process we're trying to learn more about where there might be opportunities for change that we might make changes to our recommendations as well. Of the key issues being put forward, a number are about specific buildings. There's also much discussion around the creation of precincts. The most submissions are about city rise and whether the medium density rules will have a negative impact on heritage. So I think that's something that will be really interesting over the next few days to see how, how, you know, how that evidence is presented and, and some of the ideas that may be raised around that in terms of how we could um, reduce the impact, potential impacts on heritage. Hazelton's excited about the future of Dunedin's built heritage. He says while it's previously come under the operative plan, that hasn't always given enough scope for enabling some projects. The way we've approached this plan is to be more enabling, so I think if we can achieve what we have under, you know, in some areas, relatively restrictive rules, I think it's very exciting to think about what you could do under somewhat more enabling rules. Hearings for the 2GP are expected to finish in February next year. Daryl Beza, The South Today. Still to come on the South today, this year's South Dunedin Street Festival gets the chop and a Highlander and All Black faces a misconduct hearing. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garrett Hall. One come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations, a year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November, www.vhc.co.nz for more information. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Hi, I'm Doug Hall. I stood for council in the 2013 election and got elected. The achievements I've been part of in the last three years have been of a great benefit to the city. I'm reducing debt, improving contracts and better liaison with the general public. To further reduce debt and better management of all contracts, vote Doug Hall first choice for council. Hello, my name is Conrad Stedman. I'm 46 years old, married with two beautiful children. A former policeman of 10 years in South Auckland and Dunedin and a business owner. I offer strong leadership with no hidden agenda. I am committed to serving our community. I am your voice for our community 
for our future. Vote one for Conrad Stedman. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bruce Fairhurst. The City Council is a giant decision-making machine and every year they make thousands of decisions that affect ratepayers, some in a small way, some in a large way. It's really important that those decisions are fair, made in a democratic way and made with accurate and reliable information. I have lived my entire life in Dunedin and I love it here. I've been working in the construction industry all of that time. I've seen massive changes in the consent process, making it difficult to build or improve your property. I see opportunities to make this process much more user-friendly. Vote Bruce Fairhurst for the one. I'm looking forward to joining a talented team on the council this term and making Dunedin the best city it can possibly be. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. Hi, I'm Dave Yardley, and I'm standing for the Otago Regional Council. Two of Otago's greatest resources are our outstanding natural landscape and our capability for agriculture. Getting the balance right between preservation of that landscape and intensification of farming is a real challenge. To meet that challenge, we need a firm understanding of both our environment and our land based businesses. I have that understanding to ensure that our landscape and farming can coexist in harmony for generations to come. A vote for Dave Yardley is a vote for reason, balance and integrity. Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. Voting in this year's local body elections closes at noon on Saturday the 8th of October. Your voting papers must be in the hands of the electoral officer by this date and not in the mail if your vote is to count. If you've not enrolled or received your voting papers, you may still cast a special vote. Visit the DCC Customer Services Centre in the Octagon or phone 477-4000 before noon on Saturday the 8th of October. Remember, you have the right to vote. Don't be left out. Vote today. Welcome back. The annual South Dunedin Street Festival is not going ahead this year. Committee members say it's being cancelled due to the ill health of the main organiser and they're learning an important lesson about collective responsibility. The party's over, for this year anyway. The vibrant annual South Dunedin melee of street performance, food stalls, live music and more is taking a break. The festival committee has decided to postpone the festival for this year and we're going to be holding it um, next year. Um, it's due to the uh, uh, festival was organised by a convener, um, Nick Orbell, and uh, Nick has been absolutely great and essential in the role, but Nick's had a few health problems this year, later this year, and is unable to do the role um, uh, this time around. Waterhouse says the committee now understands it takes more than just one person to run a festival. We have now realised the vulnerability of the uh, festival being relying on one person. We still wish Nick um, well and he will be um, coming back to um, uh, do the festival again next year but we will have a whole committee behind them. He says much of the groundwork had been done and it's taken a bit of an effort to advise stakeholders that the event's not going ahead. The next full South Dunedin Street Party is scheduled for early November 2017. However, Waterhouse says there may be a little something before that. Also, we, um, we are looking at holding a pot, looking at the possibilities of logistics of holding a smaller event uh, in early next year, maybe February or March next year. Um, watch the space. He says if something can be organised for early in 2017, it won't be the full noise of the proper street festival, but should be a great community event. Darrell Beza, The South Today. 
The Invercargill City, City Council isn't likely to reach its voter turnout goal for this year's local body elections. The current portion of eligible voters who have returned their papers is down 10% on council predictions. But staff say there's still time for people to make their voices heard. Local body elections around the country often struggle to inspire people to have their say. But in Southland there is usually more engagement in voting than in most districts in New Zealand. The Invercargill City Council has the goal for 60% voter turnout, but with the ballot closing in two days, Electoral Officer for the ICC, Graham Lowe, says the goal is unlikely to be met. We were always aiming to, to try and get over 50%. Uh, we have in the past been one of the leading councils in New Zealand where we've had in excess of 60% generally. Uh, it looks like we're not going to receive 60% this year, but we're certainly over 50 where currently sitting at 49.5%. Another council in Southland that's struggling with voters is the Southland District Council. They're currently sitting on a third of registered voters returning their ballots so far. Lowe says there's a couple of reasons why people don't vote. General apathy uh, is one reason that we sometimes get a low turnout. The alternative to that is that people are happy with uh, the way that council's currently operating. Southland District Electoral Officer Dale Lofsovsky says people between the ages of 18 and 40 are the least likely to vote. He says online voting could be the way to increase voter turnout amongst young people. Graham Lowe agrees, saying it's likely to be the way of the future for elections around the country. And there was about eight or nine councils that were looking at online voting. Uh, the council backtracked on that because they had some concerns around security issues and that will be a major factor going forward with whatever they decide. But I'm reasonably confident that we'll, not necessarily this council, but certainly other councils in the country, will have online voting available at the next election. Lowen Ofsowski says it's not too late to cast your vote. Voting is open for both elections until midday Saturday. Ruby Spink, The South Today. After the break on the South today, an incident in a toilet results in an all-black being stood down from this weekend's game against South Africa, and a young Danita man wins a national surfing title. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin, available as oil or in capsules, Go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Hi, my name is Wano Fong. I believe that together we can build a brighter future for Dunedin. I'm presenting two major infrastructure proposals that won't cost the ratepayer a single cent. The first is a flood protection scheme for South Dunedin based on successfully used displacement tank systems overseas. The second is a major new redevelopment of our harborside area to create a world-class community space. Vote Wano Fong and let's build a brighter future together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joshua Peter Cantley, working in social services, and I am standing for the Denham City Council. I support improvements in student housing, business investment, waterfront development, and South Denham for the resolution. Denham should be accessible for all, and if I'm elected, I will make Denham a vibrant destination. Authorised by Joshua Perry, 95 North Road, North East Valley. Hello, I'm Isla McLeod and I'm standing for the Dunedin City Council. I'm recently returned from Christchurch where I spent two terms on a community board as Deputy Chair or Chair. I was on the Water Management Zone Committee and I was on the board or a member of several environmental groups. And now I'd like to use all of that knowledge and experience for the good of Dunedin. And if it's good for Dunedin, 
it's good for you. Hello, my name is Malcolm Dixon. I'm standing for the Dunedin City Council. I've been in retail for 40 years in Dunedin and I would like to see some changes in the city. I'm passionate about growing business opportunities in Dunedin. Transport and parking issues are important to me and flooding and management of city assets, especially in South Dunedin area, are a major issue. So remember to vote for Malcolm Dixon at Dunedin City Council. Hello, my name is Anne Galloway and I'm standing for election to Dunedin City Council. I have lived and worked in Dunedin for 20 years and I'm very proud of this city. And I do know that our times there are very difficult decisions that need to be made. We need councillors who care, who care about the people, about their issues such as health care, housing and an ageing population. Vote for me and I will do my best for you and for Dunedin. Hi, I'm Dave Cole, Mayor of Dunedin, and together we're building a great city, not just for now, but for the future. And I'm committed to creating a positive legacy of sensible investments, sustainable businesses, an emphasis on infrastructure and environment, healthier homes, and your community wellbeing. A future our kids can be really proud to inherit. If you want the same positive future, please mark one for Dave Cole for Mayor and return your voting form. Thanks. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Come one, come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations. A year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November. www.vhc.co.nz for more information. Voting at this year's local body elections closes at noon on Saturday the 8th of October. Your voting papers must be in the hands of the electoral officer by this date and not in the mail if your vote is to count. If you've not enrolled or received your voting papers, you may still cast a special vote. Visit the DCC Customer Services Centre in the Octagon or phone 477-4000 before noon on Saturday the 8th of October. Remember, you have the right to vote. Don't be left out. Vote today. A new central model for emergency management is being implemented in Otago. The region's six territorial authorities have agreed to a more inclusive structure following several reviews. It's designed to enable more efficient, effective and consistent operations. Emergency management officers will remain within each district or city council, reporting to a general manager, a regional manager. That's already happening in most of the rest of the country and will take effect locally at the beginning of November. Civil defence operations will be overseen by the Otago Regional Council. All Black and Highlander Aaron Smith is facing a misconduct hearing after allegedly having sex with a woman in a disabled toilet at Christchurch Airport. Smith has been stood down from the All Blacks for the game against South Africa this weekend. He'll face a misconduct hearing on his return to New Zealand. The 27-year-old halfback was witnessed entering a disabled toilet with a woman at Christchurch Airport on a busy Sunday afternoon last month. It was reportedly obvious what the two were doing, although the woman was not Smith's partner. He was in All Blacks uniform at the time. It's not the first time Smith has been publicly humiliated as a result of private indiscretions. A young Dunedin surfer is celebrating a national title from the Scholastic Championships in Gisborne. King's High School pupil Elliot Brown won the under-16 boys division to claim his first scholastic title. The year 12 pupil has just returned from the Junior World Championships in Portugal, where he competed in the New Zealand team. He was the first in Eden surfer for more than a decade to be selected for the team and was the only South Islander in this year's squad. Five Otago surfers made finals in the last day of the Gisborne competition yesterday. The team finished seventh overall despite having fewer surfers. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. New technology in Otago's rescue helicopter fleet is likely to save lives, allowing pilots to fly safely through bad weather. A multi-million dollar dairy farm and research facility is being built near Invercargill to boost the industry and Southland's economy. And Dunedin's architectural heritage is being discussed as the City Council continues public hearings on its proposed second generation plan. 
And it's time now to find out what's going to be in Friday's edition of the Otago Daily Times. And editor Barry Stewart joins us. Good evening. Hello, Rebecca. Dunedin City Council's a good news story. Dunedin City Council companies are performing well. We have the DCHL results. Uh, we also have reaction uh, to the Aaron Smith indiscretion. Um, yes, more on that. Um, Target University are worried about unintended consequences of heritage provisions in the 2GP. Hmm. Um, no Baldwin Street toilets for the cruise ship um, season. Oh dear. Uh, a disappointing mm. uh, development. Uh, we also have a full page on the uh, uh, Dunedin Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. So look out for all the action there. We'll, have the, we'll name the All Black team to play the Springboks uh, this weekend. Uh, lots of other sports news in our bumper sports, sports lift out. out. Awesome. That's tomorrow's ODT. Thanks, yep. Barry. Thank you. Time now for tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. Here is our southern view as taken of proctorial justice at the University of Otago. To the situation, the airflow has tended southwesterly, you may have noticed. It's become a little colder as some fronts are passing over the south from the Tasman Sea. Another front is due tomorrow night and early Saturday before the southwesters ease on Sunday. We're looking for a fine day for Balclutha and the Catlins tomorrow, both on 13. Some cloud with westerlies for Gore and Lumsden, also on 13 degrees each. A fine day awaits Alexandra, Queenstown and Wanaka, all heading for a high of 14 tomorrow. So west is though for Tiana, with showers later in the day, 12 degrees. Fine weather with southwesters easing for Omaru and Timaru, both on 13, and a lovely fine day with little wind for Omarama and Twizel, going for 14 degrees each. In Dunedin tonight, showers, but they will clear. Tonight's low 7 degrees. Tomorrow becoming fine and sunny with southwesters easing during the day, although another period of showers is expected to develop at night. We're expecting 13 degrees. And on Saturday, showers clearing, sunny periods increasing in the afternoon. Cold southwest is slowly easing. Could be a contender for washing day, 13. In Invercargill tonight, showers clearing, southwest is easing and a low of 5. Tomorrow, sunny periods at first, but showers developing later in the day with westerlies freshening. Gussie southwest is developing at night, 12 degrees. And on Saturday, showers clearing, southwest is easing with a high of 11. And that's all from the team here at the South today for Thursday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.